welcome to SAD TV News. I am Shana Esprit, your presenter for today. In our top stories, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School to host a sexual abuse consultation. Barbados AG concerned about U.S. reports on child prostitution. Growing evidence of chemical weapons use in Syria. And in sports, West Indies Players Association wants new MO and collective bargaining agreement. Details of this will follow. No child from 2012 onwards should be born with, with HIV. Even if you infected with HIV, you're still a human being. You're still living, you're still breathing, so we gotta love and respect them. Darren Sami here endorsing the Live Up campaign. 2012, from now on, no Caribbean child born with HIV. We're moving forward, we're educating our people, and it's all about love, protect, respect. Live up, live up, shout, live up. The Forestry, Wildlife and the Parks Division on Thursday, April 24th held a presentation entitled Life Cycles of Amazon Parrots. This is one of the many activities for the observance of the 2013 Caribbean Endemic Birds Festival. Dr. Paul Rilo of Rare Species Conservatory Foundation delivered the presentation in the form of a PowerPoint slideshow. Before the presentation began, he stated that we all need to set the highest standards for the bird's preservation. So every year, it's a, it's a privilege to play a small part in that. And again, I congratulate everyone in forestry and in the entire country in uh, this incredible achievement to impart the importance of biodiversity through avian diversity and culture and beauty. My presentation this evening is uh, thematic, and my, uh, my goal was to try to weave uh, what we've been doing with parrot conservation into the context of this year's theme for CEBF, which is Life Cycle for Birds. And I thought the best way to do that was really to present the context of conservation of parrots. Dr. Rilo's presentation covered life cycles in Amazon parrots, in general by extension how those life cycles and history species relates to the conservation of Amazon parrots. The presentation provided information on various topics that most individuals were not aware, in that most of the participants were not aware that in the past 200 years, 1.5 million species of plants and animals have been identified. We've been around a long time as scientists. We've been going through the world. We've identified a lot of plants and animals. We've, we've, we've identified over a million and a half species so far. But we don't know how many species there really exist. It could be anywhere from three to 100 million different species. And as science progresses, we know that we're losing species. So the, the imperative of conservation is to protect what we know exists as well as what we have yet to discover. And we know now that we're losing species at such an alarming rate that we could lose half of what we have very, very soon. Dr. Rilo said the reason why the Caribbean Endemic Birds Festival is so profound and important is that people have to value nature in some form. We have an identity with it. We are dependent on it regardless of the economic or spiritual rationale, he stated. But the point is that we develop techniques from these birds that we can implement in the wild. That's the context of conservation, the peeper camera, the famous telescoping fiberglass pole with a very inexpensive camera at the end. Enables us to look inside those cavities and see the wonders of nature. It's a tiny little thing, actually very inexpensive. And it climbs up and goes in the hole. And we stay on the ground, so in a matter of just a few moments, we can see what's really going on. And like most Amazon parrots, the green-cheeked Amazon parrot, makes a nice tidy little nest. Remember parrots, most parrots, with the exception of a very few, do not make their own nest cavities. They have to occupy something that's pre-existing. Dr. Rilo commended the Forestry, Wildlife and the Parks Division for the tremendous work they have done thus far and he encourages them to continue with their pensiveness towards the parrots. In more news, on Sunday, April 28th, the Dominica Association of Persons with Disabilities will host a walkathon to raise funds for their organization. The walkathon will commence at the Lubia bus stop from 7.30 a.m. to Belfast. 
Executive Director of DAPD, Mrs. Nathalie Murphy, is urging the public to participate and to donate to their charity event. During the 29th Annual General Meeting held on Monday, April 8th, President of the Association, Mr. Alexander St. Louis, made an appeal for government to increase its $11,000 monthly subventions. The association continues to face difficulties with salaries for its hardworking employees. Mrs. Murphy believes that a Walker Fund is a great way to raise money, especially for a cause you are passionate about. Following the Walker Thon, the participants will break off for lunch in Belfast at 12 p.m. At 2.30 p.m., the group is expected to host several sporting activities at the Belfast Sports Center. She will also like to remind the public that they can also make donations at their office located in Goodwill. They can be contacted on number 440-0842. In other stories, the Ministry of Agriculture has stepped up its efforts with an eradication program in an attempt to rid the country of the deadly citrus greening disease, also known as Wang Long Bing. As you know, Wang Long Bing, um, commonly known as citrus thinning, is one of the most dangerous diseases of citrus. This disease has devastated the citrus industry in Florida and we intercepted the citrus green in Dominica in May of 2012. Since then, the Ministry of Agriculture has put a rapid integrated pest management system in place where we have free main principle, free main strategy, elimination of infested trees that are trees that have been infested with um, HLB, Wang Long Ming release of parasitoids that that is um, natural enemies biological agent that will fight against the asian citrus salad head of the plant protection and quarantine unit mr ryan anselm also added that the agent citrus psyllid is that vector that transports the lethal disease mr anselm says they are focused on trying to rid the country of this disease and to manage the vector which is island-wide he says it is very difficult to implement a program to fight this vector. Because of the nature of the vector, we have collaborated with the University of Florida to provide these natural enemies. Presently, we have imported 40,000 Tamarixia. This is the parasitoid to fight against the, the, the silid, which transmit the citrus greening disease. We have also done a lot of work in eliminating of trees. For example, in Point Michel, we have cut and inject um, approximately 300 backyard trees. We're talking about limes, grapefruit that are infested with the disease. And we are also in Wesley doing the same. We have currently cut and inject about 45 trees in Wesley. So the program is to eliminate all infested trees. This the trees need to be removed as they can be used as a source of inoculation for the vector to be transmitted. He stated Wang Long Bing is presently in Wesley, Point Michel, La Plaine, Portsmouth and other communities in the north of the country. The eradication program seeks to contain the disease where it is presently located while preventing it from spreading to other areas, said Mr. Ansem. We believe with the assistance of the general public and all the citrus farmers to, if they, everybody come together to fight this disease, Dominica will be successful in eradicating the disease. So we are also asking the farmers to purchase citrus planting material only from the botanical gardens from the government nursery. Um, we have the capacity to provide clean and true to type planting material. Um, when I mean clean material, I mean material that is free of diseases, not only citrus greening disease, but from tristeza, from phytophthora and other diseases that can cause your plants to die. So again, we're asking everybody to come on board, particularly the citrus farmers. Do not move planting materials from one area to another. This is vital, he said, as the vector and the disease has not been detected in commercial areas such as syndicate and no one should move any planting material to these areas. Dominica has been fighting the citrus greening disease since 2002 with a citrus greening certification program. 
Thus far, the government of Dominica has spent $5 million in eradicating of this disease, noted Mr. Anzem. He added, the only way we can be successful in eradicating this disease is with the cooperative effort of not just farmers, but the general public. In other news, due to the member of reported cases of sexual abuse at the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, a forum has been organized by the members of the pastoral care team, which is geared at educating students and parents on child abuse and, more significantly, sexual abuse. The consultation is set to take place on Monday, 29th April, at the school with an aim to reach out to other schools, including the general public, to join in this quest to alleviate the abuse of children. But our main focus is sexual, sexual abuse because it's affecting a lot. We have a few cases here, and, uh, but, and of course it has a few cases in other schools. Our main focus is on sexual abuse. We will be having the media presence. We will be having different um, speakers like Mr. and Mrs. Wick. We have a member from the welfare department. We also have from the educational department. And um, we have also the parents, parents and students. So we are actually calling on parents, you know, to, to focus a bit more on their children, to, like, take care of their children. Ms. John Baptist encouraged parents to listen to their children as it will help them to be knowledgeable. There are some of the accomplishments that the group would like to gain from this forum. We expect that parents will listen, we expect um, parents to listen to their children more and also to focus on their children, pay a little more attention to them. We expect um, not only parents, but um, other people out there, like the ministers and so on. So we need everyone, I mean everybody, everybody on board. Although Ms. John Baptist is of the view that child abuse cannot be completely non-existent, efforts to decrease the act is possible. In today's society, a lot of sexual abuse cases are not reported because individuals are afraid to come forward. Voices are now encouraging these persons to speak out. I like to say to parents that um, in every problem there is a solution. So I want you to seek help. Whoever that you feel comfortable with, that you can talk to, that you can address this situation with, come to them. Seek help for your, your, your children because your children is your future of tomorrow. Many guest speakers will be expected to address this forum. And in entertainment, the organizers of the Dominica's Next Supermodel Inc. is promising a night of excitement, glamour, elegance, beauty, and fashion as they launch their top 10 finalists that will be performing on Friday, May 10th at the Windsor Park Stadium. The founder and the CEO of the NSM Inc., Ruth Augustine said that this organization is not all about modeling, but makeup arts, photography, and designing, directing, and coaching. Ms. Augustine said this show will be the first of its kind to be showcased in Dominica, as she highlighted the objective of the organization. Our objective is to effectively train, sensitize, and educate young people between ages 16 and 30 with the necessary tools needed to enter, survive, work delinquently, and ultimately be successful in the modeling industry, both regionally and internationally. The organization will be searching for models who may be brand ambassadors, who may fit into different varied modeling assignments which the world may offer. She said DNSM Inc. was created with two folded goals, one being to promote a better network collaboration between Dominica and other Caribbean modeling acts in the fashion industry, and to partner with stakeholders to enhance youth development and economic growth. The show boasts of four segments where they will be judged, introduction, swimwear, professional attire, and high fashion attire. Of course, no show should take place without any prizes. Miss Augustine gave a preview of what the prizes entailed. The winner will get a trip to St. Martin Fashion Week Accommodation paid, taken by Dominica's Next Supermodel Inc. A trip to Antigua Fashion Extravaganza on June 1st, paid trip by Dominica's Next Supermodel Inc. Makeup supplied by Mio Cosmetics, wardrobe by Casual Behavior, one year modeling contract with Dominica's Next Supermodel Inc., a professional photo shoot, 
and an advertisement by Tempo Water. Golda James, one of the aspiring models, explained why this competition is important to her career. My name is Golda James, I'm 18 years old and I reside in Point Michel. A lot of people ask me, Golda, why modeling? Because I consider modeling an art form that provides me with the opportunity to express myself and tell people who I am and, tell, and show people how confident I am through my walk and through my outfits and what I wear. This competition has brought me nine new friends and these ladies have made this competition much more interesting and fun and it's been very experience filled. Model number two, Miss Kersha Breezy, voiced what everyone should expect from her on the night of the show. I chose modeling because it allows me to express myself freely and it teaches me to embrace my identity. As a result, I would like to extend an invitation to everyone to come out to the first ever fashion extravaganza party for May 10th, 2013. And in court news, Mr. Randolph Piper of Cochrane will hopefully learn to keep his sticky fingers in his pockets and not on other people's property after facing Rosal Magistrate Ozil Luis on Friday, April 26, for theft which he pled guilty to. According to the facts of the case read by Police Prosecutor Inspector Innocent Toussaint, on Friday, April 12, Mr. Philip Blondel of Cochrane secured his home and went to Portsmouth. However, a few days later, he received a certain information which led him to travel back to his home. On arrival, he met one of the doors of his home damaged while another was opened. Upon inspection of his home, he noticed his welding machine, an electronic shaver valued at $500, and a pair of AA batteries valued at $12 missing. He then reported it to the police and an investigation was launched. When the investigation officer met the defendant, Mr. Piper, he confessed to the crime saying, okay, I take it. He went further and explained to the officer that he went to the house and passed through the back door, searched the home and took the welding machine which he made numerous attempts to sell in Roseau and was successful with a sale price of $500. The defendant added he spent the money drinking and smoking with his friends. He was then cautioned and arrested. The welding machine was recovered, but the other stolen items were not. Before the sentence was handed down, the prosecutor told the court that Mr. Piper had 11 similar previous convictions. Mr. Piper was fined $512 in compensation or in default spend three months in prison and $2,500 for the charge of theft or spend 15 months in prison. All fines are to be paid forthwith. In other court news, a Jamaican national residing in Maho found himself in serious trouble with the law following an incident with his spouse, Ms. Kisha Bari. It is reported that Mr. Devon Watson allegedly beat Ms. Kisha Bari on Wednesday, April 24th at Maho. Further reports are that he intimidated Ms. Bari on the above-mentioned date in Roseau in a threatening manner and also threatened to kill her. Following this incident, Mr. Watson was charged with battery and threats which he pled guilty to. However, for the charge of intimidation, he pled not guilty. He was denied bail as the prosecutor indicated he is a flight risk. The trial has been set for June 21st, 2013. In other court news, Mr. Kendall Linton of Vieques will have to wait until July 17th for his trial to begin after he pled not guilty to the charge of threats when he appeared before Magistrate Ozil Luis on Friday, April 26. It is reported that on Wednesday, April 24th at Vekas, Mr. Linton allegedly told a police officer, and I quote, I must shoot a police. Is me they want to trouble? I must kill one of all you, end quote. It is alleged he also told Ms. Kermisha Williams, and I quote, Stop that case or I will cut up your face, end quote. He was denied bail after the prosecutor informed the court that he used threatening language to intimidate a virtual complainant for a court matter she has against him. We now go to Deslin for Street Talk. Right now we're at the Massac Primary School where we receive the opinions of the grade 6 students as to whether junk food should be banned at primary schools. Do you think junk food should be banned in school? Yes, I do because it is not healthy for us and as young children, the healthier foods we can get is better for us. Okay, do you eat a lot of junk food? 
Not really. Okay, do you have a lot of friends that eat junk food? Yes. Okay, and if you eat a lot of junk food, well, what do you think it will do to you? You'll get cavities and bad health. Okay, do you think junk food should be banned in primary school? No, it should not be banned. Why not? Because that is the most things um, children like. And it makes them feel happy when they eat it. Well, a lot of people say junk food might be very bad for the health. Do you agree with that? If you eat a lot, it might be bad, but not too much. Do you eat a lot of junk food? No, once a week. It is important so that when you grow older, you can have good health and everlasting life. Okay. If, your primary, if you came to school one morning and your teachers told you that junk foods are banned, what would you react? I'll be vexed because I know it is delicious. Because a lot of children get obese at a young age. Do you eat a lot of junk food? Not really. Do you prefer to eat healthy? Yeah. Okay, what if you came to school one morning and your primary school teachers told you that junk foods were banned? How would you react? What would you say? I would say, yeah! No. Why not? Because some of our children, they like to eat junk food. Do you prefer eating healthy? Yes. If you came to school one morning and your primary school teachers told you that junk foods were banned at school, how would you react? What would you say? I would react very bad because I like junk food. Yes, it should be. Why should it be? Because most children, like, they eat too much of it and like they get cavities and it's bad for them. Do you prefer to eat healthy? Yes. Do you eat a lot of junk foods? No. Okay, what if you came to school one day and your teachers and your principal told you that junk foods were banned from the school? How would you react? What would you say? Well, I'd be glad. Do you think a lot of your schoolmates eat a lot of junk food? No, not really. Um, honestly, I think, well, it depends on what you um, put it as. In a way, yes, because most children, instead of eating their lunch, they are going to buy junk food and that is not very good for their health. But at the same time, if you don't have snack, you can always go by the vendors, buy like my watch and... Um, um, what's the name again? Yes, Valda. You can always buy a snack. But honestly, I think that it should not be banned, but it should have its certain extension, certain limits to how you must, like, it, because there's its benefits and there's its um, disadvantages. So what this school should probably do, is probably say, okay, at about that time, that time, for certain causes, you can buy junk food, but other than that, it should be restricted. So what if you came to school and your teachers or your, pri or your principal told you that the junk food were banned in the school, what would you do? Um, I would, I would, um, I'm a um, kind of, I'm quiet person, so I would have my own opinion and say, oh well, that's a little sad because most children rely on the junk food every day because sometimes their parents don't have money to buy other things otherwise than that. But I mean, it's the teachers and the principal's decision, so I'll just leave it up to them. I am Desin Joseph and you're watching Sad TV News. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, the regional highlights. Wherever the iron play, I'll be there. Wherever the steel pan play, I'll be there. Anytime is carnival, yo, festival, bacchanal. Behind the big truck, down the road, everybody, they know that I'll be there. Yo, this is Mr. Challenge. You're watching Sad TV, the people's choice. <laughs> 